We've got an exam question walkthrough here for halogenoalkanes. So the question looks at the rate of hydrolysis, nucleophilic substitution mechanism, the drawing of reflux apparatus, and the identification of substances from mole data. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you want to leave a comment below, that would be great. Okay, so here's the question. It's on four separate slides, so I'll just click through. If you want to pause each time, have a go, and then play on for the answers. Okay, so part A, state and explain how the halogen in the haloalkane affects the rate of hydrolysis. So the first thing I'm saying is the rate of hydrolysis of haloalkanes is determined by the bond strength or the bond enthalpy of the carbon-halogen bond. And then I'm going to give the order now. So the fluoroalkanes are hydrolyzed the slowest because they have the strongest carbon-halogen bond. Then your chloroalkanes, then your bromoalkanes, and then iodoalkanes will be hydrolyzed the fastest. They've got the weakest carbon-halogen bond or the lowest bond enthalpy carbon-halogen bond. Part B now, so the mechanism. So we've got to outline the mechanism for the reaction with aqueous sodium hydroxide. Um, we're only interested in the hydroxide ion, so the Na plus ion won't feature in this mechanism. We've got to show curly arrows rather than dipoles on the products. Okay, so the first part of the mechanism. So we've got our hydroxide ion. I always show the lone pair. Um, so the pair of electrons is attracted to the slightly positive carbon. So we need to show this dipole across the carbon halogen bond. And then that's going to repel the electron pair in the carbon halogen bond completely onto the halogen. And so it's going to break that bond. Okay. So we draw the curly arrow must go from the lone pair to the slightly positive carbon atom. And then from ideally from the middle of the bond onto the halogen. And that's going to generate the product. So we've got cyclohexanol there and a chloride ion. I've split part C into two separate slides. Um, so the first one, just got to draw a label diagram to show how the student would carry out the hydrolysis of haloalkane E. It does say there that it's refluxed. So basically we need to draw a reflux apparatus. So I've just got one from Google Images, obviously, Yours doesn't have to be as good as this, but as long as you get some of the key elements to it, you'll be fine. So what sort of things are we looking for? So we need a, a, a suitable container to heat the mixture up in. So haloalkane E and sodium hydroxide will be in either a pear-shaped or a round bottom flask. You certainly can't use a conical flask for that. Obviously, you've got a heat source below that. Your condenser obviously goes um, in a vertical position. You wouldn't need to say um, Liebig, but I've put it in there. It's a Liebig condenser. The examiner is going to be looking carefully here, so making sure there's no um, gaps that vapors could fly out of. So, And the other thing they're going to be looking for is the flow of the water. So water always flows in at the bottom of a condenser, travels around the outside, um, jacket, glass jacket, and it goes out at the top and we don't want to stop in either. Okay, so the last part of the question, so we use all this mole data to come up with the, um, to identify E, F and G. Okay, so the first thing I'm saying is hydrolysis of haloalkanes produces alcohols, so we know that F is going to be an alcohol, like we saw in that mechanism. So when you hydrolyze 0 0.01 moles of the haloalkane, it's going to make 0 0.01 moles of silver halide precipitate. That's because um, if I just go, sorry, I'm going to have to go back a few slides. If you think about the hydrolysis of this one here, okay, so one mole of this has generated one mole of halide ions. And so therefore, when the silver ions are present, you're going to get silver chloride produced from the reaction, the precipitation reaction with that halide ion. So the moles of this is directly linked to the moles of silver halide, so it's a one-to-one -one relationship. 
So I'll just go back to the question now. Okay, so 0 0.01 moles of haloalkane will produce 0 0.01 moles of silver halide precipitate. Now we actually know the mass of the precipitate, so we can work out its MR. So the MR of G, the silver halide precipitate, is mass over moles, so that's 188. Now if we subtract from that the um, relative atomic mass of silver, we're left with 80.1. So the halogen in the silver halide will be bromine. I know that's not exactly 79.9, but um, it certainly isn't any of the other halides. So we've now identified that G is silver bromide. So where would we go next? So we're told that alcohol F has an MR of 74. So I'm going to take off the 17 for the OH group. So I'm left with 57. So that the remainder is C4H9. Okay, so we're talking about, well, it could, could it be butanol or butan-2-ol? Well, we've got to bring in this information here about F having a chiral carbon. So the chiral carbon means that there's an atom, a carbon atom in that molecule, in that alcohol F with four different groups attached. So it's not butan-1-ol, it's butan 2 all okay? And there's your chiral center there. So you can see there's four different groups attached to that carbon. There's the OH group, there's the CH3 group off to the right, there's the H, and then there's the CH2, CH3, the ethyl group off to the left. So that's why that carbon's chiral. So the final thing is to identify E. So remember, um, E reacted with sodium hydroxide to produce this alcohol here. So basically, the, the original molecule that this was made from must have been bromine on there. So E is 2-bromobutane.